Okay, so today I want to talk about some more cool things that we can do with the web dev tools and specifically with the console in Chrome. All right, so I'm starting off with the same page that I used for my last video, pretty much. Um, basic page, header, main, a form, a list, uh, my script. Down in my script, all I'm doing is adding a bunch of listeners. I have a few global variables that I created just for reference. And down here, we're looking at the functions that are being called by those event listeners. You can see there's nothing inside of those except for in the form submission one, I'm preventing default. And that's just to prevent the page from reloading. Okay, so in Chrome, I want to be able to open up the console and start working with these things. So one of the first things I want to show you is how you can work with the HTML elements in the console. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click here on one of my list items. I'm going to inspect. That's going to open this up. You can see that the LI was selected. If I come up here and I right click and I inspect, you can see now the H1. And you'll notice there's the two equal signs here, the dollar sign zero. Use dollar sign zero in the console to refer to this element. And now down here, this one is no longer zero. It was zero the first time I clicked on it. If I come up to the first list item here and I inspect on that, now this is the zero element. And that means when I come over to the console and I do dollar sign zero, I'm actually referring to the most recently inspected element. So that was the most recent. There's the one before that. There's the one before that is the other list item. So you can see here, that's the second one being highlighted in my page. There's the first one. Here's the H1 element. So I can use these as part of my script if I want to test something, if I want to find out, hey, what was the text inside of the dollar sign two? So I can do that dot text content. There we go. And that is the text content. So very useful in your scripts. You want to test things. You want to find out what's been going on. Um, there's also here, if you ever used jQuery, this is like document query selector or the dollar sign function that you have in jQuery. I want to be able to target something on the page using a CSS selector. Well, we can do this. I want to get inside of main find the first list item. You can see it's highlighted there. That's the one. So when I do that, there it is. Sure enough, that's the first list item inside of main. Um, you can also specify a second parameter. If you go in here, main li or let's say li nth child two. So I want the second list item and I can specify a starting node. So looking inside of document.body or some other reference point, you know, that's the first Sorry, this is the second child, which is an LI inside of the body. So you can specify a starter node. It could be something further down the page or some other location to just to narrow down that search. The double dollar sign. Okay, I want to find all the list items. You can see, here we go. I've got a node list with four of those. All four of them are inside of here. We can open this up and take a look at each one of them individually if we needed to do something with it. Anyway, all that to say, with these dollar sign properties, we can access the five most recent. So we've got dollar sign zero up to dollar sign four. The five most recent access things, the dollar sign, the double dollar sign, these are going to let us get to other elements on the page. Uh, now, if you want to clear this out, you can come in here. There is a method called clear. We can call that. It'll say the console was cleared. But personally, I prefer just to click on this button or use the keyboard shortcut, Control L or uh, Command K. I'll do that and it just clears out everything in here. Now, there's another one, dollar sign underscore, which currently is undefined because that is the most recent expression that's been evaluated. So if I say, let's take string hello, and I'm going to add on the number four. What do I get? Well, this is going to be the result. There we are. Now I have that saved. So I can say, you know what, I'm going to split that on 
the space. What do I get back? I get an array that's got two things inside of it. So this is the most recently evaluated expression. All right, great. So clear the console out, Command K or Control L or clicking on the delete button. Um, inspect is another one. If you want to go back to the elements tab right here to find something, well, I've got the HTML element here, my input, which has the ID email, so I can just put the ID in here. Let's see right here, there's the ID on this element. We can use the IDs directly as if they were variable names. So if I want to look at that field, there it is. It will jump over and it will highlight that thing inside of here. Back in the console, inspect uh, document.body. That's going to jump back over to the console as well for us. Now, or for, sorry, from the console to the elements. Now, if we want to, we can copy bits and pieces to the clipboard to use a little bit later. I can pass in an HTML element and it's going to give me the string version of that. So if I take the dollar sign for, let's see what that one was. Oh, nothing there. Dollar sign three. Now, if I paste, that's what it is. That was the fourth most recent thing that I had selected in the console is in the clipboard. So I can, again, put a couple of quotation marks, paste it in. There we go. I've got a string. I could assign that to a variable. I could say let s equal. There we are. Now I have a variable like that. And we could copy that variable that's into the clipboard. It's the same value as before. Okay, so we've got the dollar sign underscore for the expressions, dollar sign zero through four, single dollar sign, double dollar sign are the functions to like query selector, query selector all. Uh, clear, but we're probably not going to use that one. Uh, we have copy to bring something in there. We've got inspect to look at the different elements in the elements tab. Um, we also have a couple of methods for DIR, which is like a directory listing. So I'm going to choose this one right here. This is one that I previously typed. That's why it was coming up like that. Directory listing of whatever this object is. So treat it as if it were a JavaScript object which it is, and here are all of the properties and methods that we have inside of it. So we get the little arrow, we can drill down into it like a directory listing, like folders, or DRR XML. This is going to treat it as if it were an XML string, basically HTML. So now I can drill down through it like it's HTML and look at the different elements to see what's actually in the page. So DIR, DIR, XML, directory, directory, XML, two different ways that we can do this. Now, going back to our functions that we have in the script here. So down here, I've got a bunch of functions that are being called on various event listeners. So list clicked, that's an easy one. Right now, it's doing nothing at all. So I have no idea if that function is being called. If I come back here and I click inside of my UL, that function is being called, but it's not doing anything right now. If I want to know if it's being called, if I wanted to test it without coming in here and changing it, forcing the page to reload, without writing my console log statements in here, I can just turn something on. It's called the monitor function. So I did monitor events previously. Here, I'm going to do list clicked. Now, this is going to tell me every time that this function was called or is called. There we go. So it's telling me each time it's called, and it also tells me what arguments were being passed in. Now, it is going to be the string version of this or the primitive version. So if you get numbers or Booleans, great, those will show up. If you get an object, it'll say object, object. Here we're getting the mouse event, so it says object mouse event. So this is the string representation, but we do know 
what is being passed in, or at least the data type of what is being passed in to our function and when it's being called without me having to make changes in my functions down here. All right, and last but not least for today's video, uh, I want to talk about the get event listeners. There is a method called get event listeners, and you can, again, pass in some piece of HTML. I could use those dollar sign listeners. Let's say here, I'll come back here and I will inspect. There we go. There's my UL. I've clicked on the ally, it's being inspected. So in here, we could say get event listeners on dollar sign zero. Nothing. There's nothing. There's no listeners on that right now. All right. What about inside of here? If I inspect my input, well, there is an event listener on that one. So now, now that's my dollar sign zero. Now, yes, there is input. That is the event listener that's attached to this object. And it's giving me a, an array of all the listeners. We can open that up, take a look and see. All right, yeah, type input. There's a function that's going to be called. That's my form submit, or sorry, my um, enter text method down here. It's being called every time somebody uses the input event or triggers the input event on this element right here. And we could do something a little bit bigger, shows more, just to show that there are potentially more. Uh, oh, sorry, not document body, just on the document. There, I have two listeners on the document. There's the DOM content loaded and the key press event. And the reason that these are arrays is that you could potentially have multiple key press or mul multiple click or multiple DOM content loaded listeners. Now, key press and DOM content loaded, you'll tend to have just one, but for things like click, you will often have multiple click listeners on the same element. All right, so there we have it. That is uh, a whole bunch more things that you can do with the console. Um, the sample page here, if you want to play around with that, uh, that's linked to down in the description. And as always, thanks for watching. If you found this useful, please uh, subscribe and share it. Thanks.